Okay, I think we're ready. We're trying this live thing to see. I had to unhook my internet, but I think my signal would keep it picked up. So welcome this morning, whether you're here in person or whether you're online to, um, you know, we do outside several times a year when we can, uh, our RCA events and then this, and in August, the last week of August, we'll be out at uh, Applegate's Pond for worship that day. And then we get to fish and all those other fun things as well. So um, welcome this morning. We couldn't have, I don't think we could have prescribed a better day to worship outside. So um, we're glad you could join us to worship God uh, in God's creation. Now, uh, announcement wise, 4th of July, busy week. We do have a funeral here on Tuesday. Um, and that is in the afternoon. So just be aware of that. And we have, um, and of course, we'll keep the Frizzell family in prayer this week. And uh, also the Colfax family. Uh, we had a um, funeral here yesterday for Ralph. So those will be part of our prayers. Uh, Wednesday, uh, kind of basic things. Thursday, obviously, the big celebration. It looks like it's going to rain all day. So um, I thought about doing, you know, some signs because the one I ordered isn't done yet. And I figured they'd wilt. So I'm not sure we're going to do that. We'll see what happens. But um, we'll, we'll do something with that. And then next Sunday, a reminder that it is RCA worship. So we'll be in the gazebo and we're hosting. Uh, this is our, July is our turn to host. So we'll be at the gazebo. And uh, our RCA friends will join us, and um, that will be a potluck afterwards. So again, bring your lawn chairs if you'd rather not sit at a picnic table, um, and then just picnic for lunch. But we will have uh, tables and things like that set up for the uh, for the potluck, and we'll probably have our little sound with us too. So um, I think that's all I've got. Anybody else? Something I missed. And you do have the list of activities on the back there. Um, and you see our capital campaign is on the way. And there are uh, letters coming out about that. Do not forget also at 7 p.m. every Sunday evening throughout the summer, through, through um, August for sure, um, we have uh, Summer in the Psalms. Um, we're reviewing one and two this week. We just talk about the Psalms, the different ways they're interpreted, and ask questions and chat. So about 30 minutes, unless we get long-winded, but 30 minutes is all it's supposed to be. Last week it went a little longer. So um, just just know that that's available every week. Right here in the garden, if it's raining, uh, go through the back door and that will be unlocked uh, with the awning over top of it, the red awning. So as a tradition, we have some folks, mm -hmm. new folks here. And so uh, I, I say a tradition because it's been almost uh, a year or a little more that we've been doing this. Oh, before I get that, let me introduce you to Pastor Jacques, who is the new pastor at Carson United Methodist. He has moved in and settled, and uh, we are excited to have him here. He has... 10 years in youth ministry, just graduated from seminary in May, and uh, he's ready to go. So he becomes official tomorrow morning. So I thought it would be good for him to come today and visit with us so he gets some of the introductions out of the way before next week when it's a whole lot bigger group. So nice to have you with us, Pastor. So we have this tradition of taking deep breaths to center ourselves. So let's just take a deep breath in. And push that out. Now uh, breathe in and hold that for a count of three. And as you let out, I want you to let your shoulders drop back a little bit. And then as we take our third breath, breathe in this very creation, the very essence, the very presence of God, and push out all the things that will distract us from our worship this morning. And now please join together in our centering prayer. Sovereign God, you clothe your people in the garments of salvation, and you bless them with grace and peace. Open our eyes to the glory of your Son, 
who comes to rule with justice and reign with righteousness. Open our ears to the sound of his voice and open our hearts to love as he loves, that we might shine like dew on the grass and dwell in Christ's peace. Amen. Now, as you are, it's, it's kind of difficult with the chairs, so I think we're just going to stay sitting down today unless you feel the urge to stand, okay? Because I don't, the push and pull thing works, but it's kind of awkward. So let's join in our call to worship. Lift up your heads, O gates. The King of glory has come. Mourning and death shall be no more. Peace on rich food and fine wine. Let's be a little bit excited about this. Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. And now we have our first hymn, Soon and Very Soon. phones. I didn't I didn't bring my I can run in and get my Bible, which is faster. Cass, I didn't get that email. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got it. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you might want to forward it to us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can do that next time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Keaton. Okay, so we have two scriptures today from the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verses 1 through 20, and chapter 22, verses 8 through 21. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us, and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, 
and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were like a blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Now, Revelations chapter 22, verses 8 through 21. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God. And then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this scroll, because the time is near. Let the one who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let the vile person continue to be vile. Let the one who does right continue to do right, and let the holy person continue to be holy. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic, arts, the sexual and moral, murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angels to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the life, that take the free gift of the water life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. the moment I won't make anybody come up and stand up here beside me since you'd probably be standing up here by yourself so that's okay you can if you want okay but I don't have any treats so uh, I'm sure the boys won't come up this time 
So today we're talking about Revelation. Say that with me. Revelation. Revelation. No S, right? Revelation. So a seeing, right? Um, uh, something new. If you have a revelation, if you're studying uh, fractions and you have a and you're struggling and you have a revelation, what does that mean? Figured it out, right? Aha! Now I get it. So, unfortunately. <clears throat> Revelation may have meant a whole lot to the ancient Jews and to the people in 70 to 90 AD, but we struggle with it a lot. So we're going to talk a little bit about that um, and, and maybe why it's hard for us, but most of all that, that there's hope in the message. So um, that's what we're going to talk about later. Right now we're going to do our noisy offering, and so our noisy offering uh, is a different Thing each month that goes to a different mission or ministry that our mission team has put together a list of those things. This month we are working on our RCA, our Riverside Church Association Fund, and they help fund uh, our youth activities. So uh, that's change or bills or we take paper, even though it's not noisy. Um, it has a different noise, um, but we uh, collect for that our goal this year was or this month was five hundred dollars do you think we made it yet we're <laughs> awful close we're awful close Four fifty-two fifty-seven. so we're close now that's going to help fund some trips and hopefully a mission trip and some things like that so us with the other riverside churches are working on this together and let's see how we do with that you can just leave that with mary at the back okay we'll pray for it from back there And this is the normal time when um, the three, uh, K, two, three, and four, and Lexi come up and dance, right? To fill the time. <laughs> Add a bit more. Circle back. <laughs> fancier than a bucket. Okay, let's pray over those funds. Dear Lord, we praise and thank you for all that you are to each one of us and all that you can become to those who have not yet been touched. And that includes those of our youth in our community. So we ask that these funds might be multiplied to do ministry and mission um, with the youth of our Riverside area and beyond. May they be multiplied in ways that we have not yet begun to imagine. All this we pray in your holy name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Awesome. Now we come to our time of joys and concerns. Uh, we have our two families um, that are, are mourning. And so we again ask for prayers for the Colfax family and the Frizzell family. Um, and... We had some thank you notes as well. We have one. If you remember a couple months ago for our noisy offering, we did um, we did the Midwest Mission in Jefferson, so specifically in Jefferson. And we sent them a very nice check. 
And um, Alaire sent this to me right before annual conference, and it's been on my desk. But I want to thank you so much for sharing your noisy offering with Mid Midwest Mission. I can hear great noisy joy as it's used to help others. I invite you to come to Jefferson and experience the Midwest Mission firsthand. Blessings, Alaire Willits. And then we have a thank you from Lexi for the Nancy Young Memorial. Thank you so much for the opportunity to continue my education, Lexi. And we have one from Kyler for the OUMC um, scholarship. Being involved at church has changed my life. I would not be the person I am today without such a supporting congregation. Thank you for your scholarship support as well. God's blessings, Kyler. So um, we have those. And answer to prayer, right? That's we pray as we give our offerings and as we um, share with each other. And so to be able to do this is an answer to those prayers. Yes. Okay, so if you have, if anybody watching would like to be involved in VBS, you can also connect with Christy and she would be glad to have your support and your ideas. So safe travels and great experiences for Kyler and Christy while they were in California for the Reagan GE scholarship. And then one last return, sorry, I'm talking to my give me the last. So uh, prayers also for faith, uh, Christie's family as they have a memorial service and a, a celebration of life for her nephew who passed away in March. So uh, it prayers for that, and that will be in Griswold, and you can find that information on the funeral home, the Recon Funeral Home uh, website. We have yes. Yvonne and Cecilia, welcome. Thank we're you. glad you could join us. And, and Pastor Jacques, we're glad you could be here. I have great joy. I have two new nephews born within the same minute. Um, so we have twin boys, and uh, they are great nephews. <laughs> My sisters would be going like, no. Uh, they are great nephews, and uh, they get to head home this afternoon. So prayers for them. She had... Um, I think it was four, 14 pounds, 15 pounds of baby, six something and seven something. Um, and one was 19 and a half inches and one was 20. She was, they were snug as a bug in a rug and uh, they were both healthy. One did have to have oxygen for a little bit, but expected because they uh, purposely delivered three weeks early. So. Uh, but he's back fine and uh, got a picture yesterday of them snuggled up together the way they wanted to be the whole time. So um, great joy for our family. Others. And great joy in this day. My goodness, this is awesome. We will pray also. There are so many people that are traveling this week, whether it's, uh, you know, for funerals and memorial services, the holiday um, there's a lot of folks on vacation this week, so let's uh, be in prayer for all those folks who are out on the road as well. Let us pray. Lord, we praise and thank you because we know that you are in this moment and you are in our every moment, that you are as close as the very cells of our body. We cannot escape you and we cannot run far enough to get away from you because we are yours and you are ours and you have wrapped us in your embrace, filled with grace and joy and mercy and love, and most of all, 
with hope. Lord, we pray for all those things that we have brought forward this morning. For those who mourn, might your embrace bring them peace. And might they um, live into this moment of peace, knowing that their loved ones are with you in your presence and you care for them. Lord, we also ask pre uh, blessings on those who are sick, on those who are traveling, and on the great joys that are part of our lives. And some days we might forget about them or we might not see them as clearly as we should. And we ask that you would continue to bring that joy into our life and to bring your people into our life and the people who need you into our lives so that we might all be your family in this space that we call Oakland and that we call Riverside and that we call OUMC. Lord, all this we pray in your holy name and the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who curse us against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we are going to move ahead. So to bring everybody up to date, we have been going through, we're in the process of figuring out who are we. And not just who we are as this individual, as Kim, as Eric, as Skip, but who are we as Christians? And so we went uh, back to the beginning, back to basics. And we kind of took chunks of the Bible, right? And, and the things that we could lump together, we did. We got through the first five books mostly uh, of those Hebrew scriptures. We got through those. We talked about uh, being Abrahamic religions. We moved on into the New Testament and talked about each gospel and Acts. And then we talked about the letters. And today we are just going to touch on, on Revelation. And here's what I need you to know is I cannot explain Revelation in under 10 minutes. Okay? So you are going to get the the snapshot right and um i'm sure because there were others other books that people were like you know i'd like to dig deeper into that so that will come at some point but right now we're just doing snapshots um it's hard to take what you know from um from the resources you have sometimes and and make them concise but if anybody really wants to read about Revelation, this is an amazing book by N.T. Wright, great theologian. It's called Revelation for Everyone. It's like he's sitting in the room talking to you. So he's explaining um, the things. That's, that's one good one. And we're going to um, end with just a message out of the end of that book. And then this is another one, a little bit more 
uh, academic, but still not overly so, by Warren Carter and Amy Jill Levine, uh, The New Testament, Methods and Meanings. So it goes through every book and tells you a little bit like, what kind of genre is it? When was it written? Uh, what is the message that came through here? And how did the people then interpret it? So another good book. Um, and we've got a little bit out of that as well. But first, we're going to start, and, and like I told Maylee, Revelation does the first thing. My rev, my, We have a class, as you're being educated for this, you have a class solely on Revelation because it's so So Revelation, and that's the first thing the professor said, Revelation, no, but no S's in here. Um, so remember that, and it's because it is one revelation, right? One revelation. Um, it is most probably written by a John, but not the John we think of uh, as the disciple, but another John. Remember uh, when we, why we often say Jesus Christ or Jesus the Christ or uh, Jesus from Nazareth. There's a lot of Jesuses at the time that, who have those names. There's a lot of Johns. There's a lot of Marks and Matthews. So sometimes it's hard to set these folks apart. And um, this is either, uh, he's also called John the Seer, John the Divine, different, um, just different names to try to set him apart from the other Johns that they might have known at the time. Um, the tradition is that this book was written in the late 90s, but recently after some more scrolls have been found, there's been further research, they really think it might be like, late 60s so even before some of the gospels were written so consider that probably prob possibly right around the fall of the temple right of jerusalem possibly right around then um and it was written probably in ancient turkey just because of the words that are used and the and the way it's written it's language from that area that that language is written in in the original text now, it is an apocalyptic writing, okay? It's an apocalyptic book. Now, that doesn't mean that it's all gloom and gloom and all the things, right? Because apocalyptic just means it's something, it's that a revelation, it's something new. Now, our, um, our language is really hard. The English language sometimes is hard to say words and and we'll talk about a little bit about some of the words that are used for revelation how sometimes it's hard to understand them in english which we've talked about before um the ancient jewish tradition did not believe that there was a separation between earth between us and heaven and that there was this big firmament in between right they believed that we coincided that, that things were uh, were not separate, but instead were melted and merged together. So again, that leads us to help us interpret what they saw this book as being. Now, the ancient Jews also struggled because they there are there are multiple sides to this story, right? And they struggled to see which one was the one they were really supposed to understand because they only wanted to understand one story, right? It's like us, we, we like, I mean, I do. I like my side of the story, right? The way I interpret things. And I'm sure you're the same way, but they were having a hard time having an open mind to be in discussion about what that could be. So they struggled according to their traditions according to uh, their theology that and some had no theology remember we're in this time of flux in that first century they might not have been christ followers or jews but were instead people that were considered of no religion or had a pagan what we call now a pagan religion right at the time it wouldn't have necessarily been a pagan religion it would have been one other than the the accepted religions but there's four things that Revelation does tell us. Um, 
And, and in the story, repetitively throughout the story, we hear these things. That the story comes from God, goes through an angel, goes through John, and goes to the churches, right? Now, we hear him talk about, we heard uh, Keaton read about the seven churches, but it wasn't just to the seven churches. Yes, it went specifically to that, but that's really only the focus of like chapter two and three, right? The rest of the revelation, as well as those letters, went to all the churches that they could touch with that story, that they could deliver to that story. So um, we often like to just put, you know, put things in the little boxes and, and these boxes are more like that big refrigerator box instead of the little gift boxes that we stuff inside of it to keep for, that we never use for the Christmas gifts we think we're gonna use, right? So this is the big box. Um, first of all, it is a letter. And that's, you know, not to just the seven churches, but to all churches after it had been given to those seven. Uh, it's prophecy. So John is pulling from the, um, from the history that he knows, right? He's pulling from the traditions. He's pulling from the life that he lived as a person of faith. And um, he's doing this because, and he's, he's calling to God to, you know, give him a word because he is a prophet of God's purpose. Not his, not Christian, not Jewish, not pagan, not anything else of God's, God's purpose. So witness is that one of those words that is really hard to, to make a distinction of from uh, original language to today's language, to English, okay? To American English, especially. Um, but, so witness means both witness, you know, being in the presence of, but it also means testimony, right? This, this original word that we use as witness also means testimony. So that means not only are you to see and hear, bring in, work it through, struggle with it, but you are to witness to your account, to give it to others so that that word passes throughout, right? But the most important is that Jesus, this is, this is the fifth thing, most important is that Jesus is central. Jesus is central to the whole story. Because what do we know about Jesus? Jesus was God's purpose, right? His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, that was God's purpose to be able to give to God's people that gift that came through resurrection, which was, and through Jesus' life, which was the redemption of us, our, the grace that was given to us, the love that was given to us, unfettered by any other tradition, just God's purpose. Now, what we often don't hear when we talk about all these things, right, is hope. Hope. Do you see hope in Revelation? Do you see hope in what can be a very scary sounding scenario? Do, do you hear that? Because it's in there. See, the, the Jewish people are, are looking for hope. Now, there's two ways to look at this. One is this hope was a prediction, okay? It was a prediction um, that only wanted to connect with history, with what had happened before and make the story be more capable of being part of a history story. But first century, it, it, and rightfully so, because first, Christian, first century Christians would have seen um, this as as the um, as Nero 
who was trying to control everything, right, as being the bad guy in Revelation. That's what they would have seen. Now, see, we see it in the 21st century and even the 20th century um, as something completely else. Every time it moves, the story moves to another set of people, we lose just a little bit of the original intent. But we know scripture is living, right? We know the word is living. So we continue to try to work it out and how it looks in our lives. The other thing that shows hope is proclamation. And that would have made sense in the first century. People would not have been, they would have been scared in the first century instead of uncomfortable. So if they were going to set out and say, Jesus is the central part of the story and Jesus is my savior. Yes, there's some, there's retaliation from government authorities that were scared of this, right? And scared of this power, but they did it anyway. As, as time has gone on, the reason we don't witness as much, do the witness part, uh, do the testimony part, Right? We, we're pretty good at the witnessing part. We can see, we can hear. The testimony part is hard because we feel uncomfortable. We're afraid we'll be ridiculed. And this story is here to say that, but this is, this is God's, this is God's plan. God's way of doing things. God's promise to us. And how can we not, how can we not witness to those things? So I just want to share a tiny little bit in this. Let's do this. When, when God chooses, he also redeems. He also works in people's lives. And the miracle of the divine with the human relationship, the divine human relationship, from the very beginning was always has always been that human thought, will and action is somehow enhanced rather than being canceled out by the divine power. So this looking for God's purpose in our lives and in the world is a part of our relationship with God. But that doesn't cancel out our relationship with God if we share it with somebody else, it is meant to be um, together, to be um, pulled together in that. Um, and the last, I just one little thing at the end, as we're looking at how it is that that it that we take this in and what does revelation mean and how can I decipher it? Here's some things that I'd like you to remember. This book has been a revelation of Jesus, God's purpose. Read that in Jesus. A testimony to Jesus, God's purpose. An act of homage to Jesus, God's purpose. This word, revelation, this book, this prophecy, listen to the bells. Remember you talked about the bells ringing? Listen to the bells coming soon. This Jesus. We often, so often, look for Jesus in the clouds and forget to look for him in each other and in our world. So in the midst of us trying to figure out what all the things mean, we just have to remember that Jesus is our purpose. Let us continuing, continue with our prayer of yearning. Please join me. God of abundance, you bless us with rich food and fine wines at your banquet table. May our offering nourish your bodies and souls of these who know only hunger and want. Bless our gifts to your Holy Spirit, that all may come to know the blessings of your table and the wonders of your love. Amen.
let us flip that. She got prayer of yearning under prayer of thanksgiving. So let's do the prayer of thanksgiving, actually. Let's do this all together. God of grace, we feel threatened by forces that seem greater than ourselves. As Jesus was taunted, daring him to spar over earthly power, we are tempted to love ourselves, to compete and compare with one another. Forgive us when we forget that we belong, above all, to your way and your truth. When we feel inclined to fight or flee, let us instead seek refuge in your wisdom and your grace. Guide us not to react badly, but to respond faithfully. Inspire us to answer insult with creative acts of love. Let us trust not in our own power, but in the strength of your love, which reigns in the heavens and on the earth forevermore. The Holy One shows us a vision of a new heaven and a new earth, where everyone will live in peace and blessing. Trusting in God's promise to wipe away all our tears, we move into a future eliminated by the light of God's love in and through Jesus Christ. It is in this Savior's name we pray. Amen. Okay, and now we will have our tithes and offerings. Court. Don't worry about it. All is well. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't charge for guests, so And you can you can leave that with Mary again. Um, let's do the doxology. And we are going to bless that offering twice. Join me in the, in the real uh, prayer of thanksgiving. God of abundance, you bless us with rich food and fine wines at your banquet table. May our offering nourish the bodies and souls of those who know only hunger and want. Bless our gifts into your holy service, that all may come to know the blessing of your table and the wonder of your love. Amen. And now we have our closing hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
And now, please join together in the benediction. The mighty one of Israel is faithful. God's promises are sure. The rock of our salvation is strong and true. Christ's kingdom never ends. The Spirit guides and guards us. The Spirit's love leads us home. And we go home in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, witnessing to the world. Amen. Amen. And our sending forth. Nope. 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 It wasn't below that. There we go. everybody for being here thanks you for joining us online if you need help getting out of your lawn chair just raise your hand and um and so we're gonna have a little lunch but also don't forget wednesday it's from 11 to 1 any time in that time that you want to come we're here at our turquoise tables having lunch so bring a friend <laughs>